Welcome to another episode of Rock the Room. I'm your host, Eric Nelson. I'm a proud board member with the Iowa Rock and Roll Music Association. And to find out more about us and the many great programs and organizations we're involved with, please check out our link below. And also don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. I also want to thank our last musical guest, Owen Justice, who has since released his album Upstream. And if you haven't had the opportunity to go check that out yet, I highly encourage you to do so because it's an amazing album. And I also need to give a big thank you to all of our sponsors who help keep this rolling. Uh, we couldn't do it without you. And uh, we will leave also a list of all of our sponsors below so you can check them out. Um, and our sponsor for this episode is uh, somebody who has uh, been in the thick of the Southwest Iowa music scene uh, for quite a few years now. Um, as the owner of the Emerald Isle uh, in Imogene, Iowa, uh, Kevin Olson has provided a stage and an environment that uh, songwriters and musicians have been able to thrive in for many years now. And he's also provided a wonderful place for uh, patrons and uh, people that appreciate and cycle on the trail. They can stop in and have a drink, something to eat, and uh, check out some live music, which we appreciate as musicians. Um, and also with that being said, uh, aside from uh, the Emerald Isle, Kevin also works for the city of Shenandoah and he coaches wrestling. So he's really no stranger to supporting this community and we applaud all of his efforts and we definitely thank him for his support on this episode. Okay, got a couple more thank yous here. I need to thank Rick Hilliard. Uh, he's running all the sound today and I need to thank Owen Justice for uh, doing all the recording and for producing the show. Um, with that being said, I'm really excited about today because we're going to intertwine some art and some music. That's the first time we've done this um, for the series. And uh, someone who's been doing that for over 20 years is Zach Jones. He's a friend of mine from Malvern, Iowa. And aside from being a brilliant artist, um, he also is a visionary. Um, he can ha proudly hang his hat on a whole lot of projects. Uh, for instance, the uh, Southwest Iowa Art Tour, um, the Art Church where we're filming today. It's an amazing room and it's just got amazing acoustics as well. Um, and also recently, uh, the Art House and of course the Malvern Concert Series. And uh, what better way to uh, promote the 2024 Concert Series than having Rick Hilliard and Dan Sullivan here with us today. Dan is over in the cheap seats. He's not here right now because we can't all fit in. Um, and they're going to be kicking off the concert series on June 15th this year. And we will provide a link where you can see the entire summer lineup and see who's gonna be playing throughout the summer. All right, I'm done hearing myself talk and I'm ready to have some real live human interaction. Uh, Rick, uh, it just feels like a few hours since I hung out with you. Uh, yeah. We did that last night at the Emerald Isle. You did a solo show over there. Kicking off the uh, St. Patrick's week. Oh, I know. What a time to be in Imogene. I mean, they don't celebrate just a day. They laugh at that. Yeah, it's, an, it's an entire week full over week. there. Yep. And of course, Dan Sullivan, he was over there with you last night and sat in. You guys sounded great as always. So, Zach, it's great to hang out with you. Um, you know, we'll talk about intertwining art and music. And again, mention that's something you've done for over 20 years now. Um, and I just want to start off by handing you your flowers and saying that I truly am a genuine fan of your art, of your vision, and uh, all of your drive. And the things that you've done for the town of Malvern and the rest of Southwest Iowa are remarkable and definitely, definitely kudos to you, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's very, very important and means a lot to, to Southwest Iowa. And uh, we've known each other now for about 20 years. And I think when I first met you, you had recently just moved back from Arizona and you were doing an art internship there. And not long after that, I met your friend, Eddie Elliott, who yep. was a great songwriter and performer. And he was touring at the time, I believe. And he, would, when he was passing through, he did a show in Malvern and you were painting his live performance at the time. And I remember thinking, man, what a cool idea and a, a unique way to capture a moment. Yeah. And of course, over the years as I've got to know you, I've seen you do that at the Malvern Concert Series, paint some live music performances. And most recently, uh, you did that uh, this past Saturday at the Chris Lager Conduit Live Show at the Benson Theater. And I bet that was a blast. You wanna talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, so 
Years ago, I started painting at a little bar in Tempe called Velo's, and they had live music seven nights a week. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a little different deal. I, I was kind of off in the corner in the dark, and I could paint. And, and uh, at the Chris Logger show, it was, uh, you know, I wasn't center stage, but there was a spotlight on me. You couldn't really miss me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so it was a little different uh, painting environment, uh, but it was also exciting. And yeah, sure. I had basically two and a half hours to try to complete a painting. And uh, I didn't quite complete it, but you yeah. know, to everyone that was watching, you know, it looked like it was done. And uh, it was a lot of fun. The music always seems to be part part of the art. You know? Yeah, yeah. When did you? So you started doing that at Belo's when you started doing that? Yeah. So that would have been probably around 2000. Okay. Um, lived in Tempe, Arizona, mm -hmm. and uh, I was trying to trying to figure out what I wanted to do with the rest of my life, mm -hmm. and I. I thought, you know, if I've got to work my whole life, I want to do something I, I truly love. Uh, love and believe in. And there's a sense of accomplishment. Yeah. And uh, being in your young 20s helps with that vision, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I, uh, I would go to Belo's and there'd be live music. There's a silversmith that would sit up underneath the stairway, make jewelry out of silk, out of uh, spoons and knives yeah, and right on. Uh, but it was full of student artwork from ASU. Um, there was, you know, more times than not, there being an artist down there painting or a silversmith. Cool. Yeah, just a creative environment. Cool. And what kept you coming back to the music, the live music performances um, I, over the years? I don't know. I don't know where that came from. I, I, uh, you know, grew up listening to the old vinyls and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, living in Arizona, you're exposed to live music. Um, you know, I, I'm not a musician. I, I, I love to listen to it. If, yeah. I'm, if I'm creating, if I'm in the studio, there's always music going. Yeah. Uh, so I, it, 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 uh, it's a good, uh, what's the word? Uh, it it complements what I do. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, music and art, all of it, whatever art it's form, all connected. It, it evokes emotion. Yeah. You know? So I yeah. guess that that makes sense. And uh, so you obviously have a deep love of music. You started the Malvern Concert Series, and I know Rick has been instrumental in helping you with that. So what all have you done as part of that, Rick? Growing that over the years. Yeah, we we get together. We gather in the winter time and start throwing ideas around and. Then the phone calls start, yeah. the pricing starts, and then the <clears> phone calls keep going. It's, yeah. a, it's quite a process to get eight to 10 weeks of music oh, yeah. coordinated, but it, it's very fulfilling once, once the concerts get going and, yeah. and yeah. Uh, the, the people show up and the vendors show up. And cool. it's, it's over, what are we on our this year? This is the 11th year. The 11th and year. Uh, shout out to Malvern wow. Bank. Uh, oh. Well, they've they've, yes, they've put made. a big investment into the live live music awesome. and and uh, yeah it's been a quick eleven years. Wow, yeah, it has. If that one anymore? You can tell me three years, thirty years. Yeah. I'm going to go. Yep, sounds yeah, about right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, like, it, it all bleeds together. While we're on the thought process, <laughs> it's like when we have music versus not having music. It is it is very visible downtown. Yeah. Uh, it's it's the difference of a full main street or you know some scattered cars here and there mm -hmm. uh, so it really is i mean you you hear you hear about the arts and music being part of revitalization but you know i've, I've lived here i've been part of it and it really is part of the revitalization effort it gives people a reason to come to malvern yeah and it sure. gives people to go to the restaurants cafes yep. and then come over and, and listen to the music and uh it's it's been a fun process to see. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. It's been a fun process for the people who partake and come and appreciate it. How would you say you've most seen it grow? Do you gauge it by the amount of people, or do you get more uh, feedback? It's usually, it's usually weather related. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know those nice days uh, that, that, that you get the stronger turnouts. Uh, you know if if you're in the retail business, there's just certain days, or a, if you're in the service industry, certain days people just show up and you, you try to figure mm -hmm. it out. You don't really know why, but it's it's the same thing with the concert series. Yeah. Some weeks are busier than others, uh, but ultimately, you know, it's a free venue. It's professional music. Um, we say bring a lawn chair. We do put out some complimentary lawn chairs. Yeah. About 20 yep. first come, first serve. Mm -hmm. Some umbrellas. Uh, yep. Yep. Cool. 
Right on. Well, why don't we put a bow on the music concert series for now? I think that you and Dan should play us a song real quick. Okay. Uh, what do you want to kick us off with? I think we'll, we'll start off with uh, a Neil Young song, Harvest Moon. All right. Featuring Dan on his dobro. All right. Sounds great. Okay. All right. Well, get ready because here comes Rick Hilliard and Dan Sullivan. Hit it.
right, Zach, I'm ready to turn my attention more towards your story and your art. Um, so let's just start at the beginning. What, uh, when did you decide that you wanted to become a full-time artist? Well, uh, when I was living in Arizona and Tempe, I, uh, I knew it was something in the creative field, but I wasn't sure what. I kept being directed towards computers, which uh, sitting in front of a computer all day, mm -hmm. I it, I'm just was was raised more hands on. Yeah. And uh I I went to an art store and I bought paint. I didn't know the difference between acrylic or oil. Oh, I started yeah? picking up colors and then I went home and I I tried sitting in front of a mirror and seeing if I could paint myself and Really? And uh I noticed that some paints blended well and others didn't and I yeah. started looking at the tubes of paint and well I like the looks of oil and oil dries a lot slower than, yeah. than water-based paints and they don't mix well uh, but I did that first uh, painting and I was like well it kind of looks like me and uh, I'm not saying it was a you know it wasn't a, a Van Gogh but yeah it's uh, pleasantly surprised I was pleasantly surprised yeah. for never taking art classes or and it just felt like something that it gained my interest to keep wanting to go mm -hmm. back to it. And uh, at the time I was working in a traditional dark room, mm -hmm. which was transitioning to digital, uh, which was an interesting time. I mean, that was all film and, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and all that stuff I still use today. Um, I, I, my question, I guess, from there is, you said you had no training, but you did do an, an apprenticeship? Yeah, so the first... How'd that come to be, the relationship? So the first three years, um, and this guy I don't give enough kudos to, um, I started working with a designer in Scottsdale, Arizona, interior designer, mm -hmm. and I took her my portfolio. I was really proud of it. She flipped through it. Okay, well, I'll, I'll try feeding you some work. So mm -hmm. I, I had a, a commission, first commission piece I ever had. I failed, but the guy gave me another chance, and mm -hmm. I, I went back and... He bought that one and commissioned me to do another one. And uh, right then and there, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be an artist. And, uh, and looking back, I, you know, again, being young. Yeah. <laughs> but I, uh, I jumped off the cliff because I, I, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I could improve on over the course of time. And uh, I met this guy during a, a Scottsdale, they had a Thursday night art walk in old Scottsdale. Okay. And all the galleries had opened up and, and uh, I was showing my artwork at this interior designer's place. Mm -hmm. Went over to have a, a bite to eat next door at, I can't think of the name of the place, but there was a guy sitting by himself and I asked him if I could join him. And uh, it's George Lyle and, and uh, he was a, a Red Wings hockey player back in the day. Wow. And uh, him and I, we, we hit it off. I told him what I was doing. And he said, oh, I'll make you a deal. Like, you come up. This is over, you know, talking for a couple weeks or so. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you can stay in the casita, but you have to do artwork for my place. That got me up into North Scottsdale, and, uh, which is next to Cave Creek. And which is, uh, it's a, there's a lot of art and it's on the very outer edge of the Phoenix Valley. There's Tano National Forest, which has a lot of the Saguaro, and mm -hmm. it's a beautiful area. And uh, ultimately, I went into a little gallery in Cave Creek and met Sergio. Very cool. And uh, Sergio at the time had been painting for about 65 years, and uh, I showed him my portfolio. I self-taught for three years, mm -hmm. and uh, he, invited me to the studio to work with them. And that was really my, the beginning of my formal training mm -hmm. was after three years. Wow, that's, that's very impressive. Yeah, so and Sergio, he had worked, he grew up in Mexico City and uh, he worked uh, with an artist named Sanders and Sanders used to paint the Mexican presidents. Really? And uh, so Sergio was a guy that would prep the palette and do kind of the grunt, the yeah, busy work, yeah. you know. He, and he is happy to be in there in a studio and, and uh, he is 14 years old. And, and so he grew up in that environment. Then he went to school for fine art. He taught fine art. He did, he did uh, fine art his, uh, his whole life. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's the, one, there's the one side of being an artist, which is the technical side, and there, there's the other side that is how to survive as an artist. 
And uh, Sergio did that. And so I always call him my mentor and he would always correct me and say, you're my pupil. Yeah. And, uh, but he was very, he was very good at being the one guy I could relate to that he had done it all. And mm -hmm. he had been, you know, the highs, the lows and, and, uh, but he was always focused on painting something beautiful and always so positive. And you know, it doesn't matter if you're a musician, you're an artist, uh, you're in the creative field, not just the creative field, but uh, a positive attitude goes a long way. Oh yeah, for sure, definitely. So what, uh, after all that, what brought you back to Iowa? So, you know, from a practical standpoint, I was in an area that, you know, was, was lucrative, but I didn't really have a place to work. And mm -hmm. I was at a stage in my life where the best thing for me is to uh, spend time in the studio mm -hmm. and get better at my craft. Yeah. And I was struggling to do that in Arizona and Cave Creek. And, and uh, I would have moved to Antarctica to have a studio. <laughs> you know? yeah. But, yeah. Uh, my hometown made the most sense and my family, you know, yeah. this is the origins of everything. And, and I knew that that was probably the most practical place for me to get a live workspace. Mm -hmm. uh, so I moved back to Malvern, Iowa in 2006. And then I got the, what I call the art church in 2012. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the downstairs, I started off as a, as a you know, studio apartment. Mm -hmm. The upstairs didn't have uh, AC or heat. Uh, the last service was in 1969. And uh, so it started off pretty primitive. And then, you know, a couple of years later, got AC and, and heat upstairs. Um, I got engaged moved out, the downstairs became an Airbnb. Yep. And then my studio moved upstairs. Uh, so the upstairs of the art church has been a studio for the previous five, five six years. Okay. And uh, now the studio's moved towards the art house next yes. door. That's what I was gonna move to next, the art yeah. house. Yeah, and uh, the art church is, is uh, more specific to Airbnb, uh, art church weddings. Mm -hmm. um, live at Art Church. Um, last yeah, year yeah. I did a, a little series in October, yep. every Sunday in the month of October, yep. featured uh, singer-songwriters, and uh, plan to do that again this year. Awesome, awesome. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, and you, it's, it's nice too, because like the, let's move into the Southwest Iowa Art Tour. Like You and some other places will have live music, but I know I was here last last yeah, year yeah the southwest so, Iowa art you know tour. and i know we, uh, owen was as well the southwest art tour started the same i think the art the malvern concert series and the art tour started the same year uh this will be the 11th year of the southwest iowa art tour awesome. we our slogan is connecting communities through art mm -hmm. um there's gathering places in different communities in southwest iowa the art church is one i'll have other artisans uh, set up mm -hmm. It's uh, some locations will do a sneak peek, <clears throat> sneak peek Friday, uh, but the main hours are Saturday and Sunday mm -hmm. and open to the public, uh, self-guided and get a map at participating locations. Cool. Uh, the Southwest Iowa Art Tour on Facebook, you can find them or southwestiowaarttour.com. Cool, cool. And we can put some links in to, okay. to lead people to that for you for sure. And that's always the third week in September. Okay. And uh, so how has that grown? Like how much has that grown since you started oh, 11 it's years ago? Yeah. It's, like how many it's, artists are involved now? Um, well, location wise, I think we've got 11, 12 locations. Okay. And uh, it's funny to see how different locations uh, kind of uh, adopt it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, up in Harlan, it's, it's more of a celebration. So there's other there's other businesses that get behind it. And, uh, and really that's what I see it too, is like, you know, in these small towns, there's plenty of things working against them. Mm -hmm. If you can have a celebration of the arts with live music and art and artisans, uh, it really can showcase uh, a small town too. Oh, because yeah. people yeah. Get, on, get their maps and they can drive through the Southwest Iowa region, which is beautiful. Uh, people course. say yeah. Iowa's flat. Uh, it's not flat in Southwest Iowa. Um, there's, 
uh, it's it's a fun outing. Yeah, yeah. I've I've been on it myself, so I know it is. Yep, I've made my way around here, and I know the 518 over in Red Oak. They have a spot. Yep. And yep. Phil. Let's make it over there and everything. So. Yep. So yeah, cool. Uh, where can people find find your artwork? Uh, I mean, obviously I've, here and in Malvern, yeah. but I mean, like I know you do murals, and you've done a lot of commission yeah, work. Yeah. So and, now like, it's. I've I've got a lot of irons in the fire, so I've got the Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. um, most of the work that I've done for the past 20 years has been commission work, so people always want to go someplace and see my art. Uh, I, I, I've become a commission artist, so once the art is done, mm -hmm. it goes to a house mm -hmm. or a business. Okay. And uh, so, I self-represent, so the art house is is a location to see my art, um, the art church. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, really, my focus has become more public art. Gotcha. And uh, so right now, I'm working with three different communities, uh, Corning, Mineola, and Stanton on murals for awesome. public art. And each one is very specific to the community. And... Uh, so that's that's pretty much my summer. Well, very cool, man. Very cool. Was there anything else that you wanted to promote or discuss before we set Rick and Dan loose to do another song? Yeah. What would you like uh, to talk about? Anything? Yeah, uh, you know, there, there'd be one thing I would say is, uh, I think sometimes when you're in a region when there's not a lot of art, mm -hmm. people tend to shy away from it because they hear people talk about it and they think they have to you know, they're not knowledgeable of it. So it's like, it's for a certain type of person. Gotcha. And it, it's really not like that. Mm -hmm. um, I would invite anyone uh, that watches this to please go and support live music, uh, go to an yes. art opening and, uh, you know, speak to the artists and understand why they, why they do what they do. Mm -hmm. And uh, nine times out of 10, I think you find something in common. And then a lot of times it's, it's uh, something that's very basic. Mm -hmm. that it's not as prolific as it's some people make it out to be. Uh, so that's that old slogan, support the arts. And it doesn't mean you have to, you have to <clears throat> pay money. You, yeah. you, you support it by just yeah. showing up. Well, yeah, and viewing what they're doing and appreciating what they're doing. Yeah. I mean, that that yeah. goes miles. I mean, as an artist, every, you want to be appreciated. Every, every <laughs> artist has uh, made a sacrifice to do what they do. Yeah. And it doesn't come naturally. You put in the time, you put in the hours. Mm -hmm. And I think when people understand that and they get to know the artist, there's a different type of respect. Well, I think that's some great advice for people to follow. So yes, get out and watch some live music. Go support people at a live art show. There's so many great artists in our area. Um, please reach out and go check it out. Um, well, let's go ahead and have uh, Rick and Dan do another song with us. And again, I want to promote the 2024 Malvern uh, Music Series. It's going to be starting this summer. Rick and Dan will be uh, kicking that off on June 15th. And the band Touch of Grey will be playing with them. And again, we will leave a link where you can get on and check out the full summer lineup. So what are we going to do, Rick and Dan? What song? Here comes the sun. How's Here that? comes the sun? Well, that sounds wonderful. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for being here. And uh, until next time, we'll talk to you then. The sun, the 
It's alright. 